looking at a little band box called the Bobcat Den here in Niles Township. It has been sold out for over an hour because we have a top five showdown in the state of Michigan. The undefeated Benton Harbor Tigers have come a calling on the fifth ranked Brandywine Bobcats for a great edition of the 46th game of the week. And how you doing everybody alongside Angelo DiCarlo and with the Hall of Famer Bo Hunt courtside, it's Chuck Freeby. It is so great to be here and to have you with us on this edition of the 46th game of the week. Ange Benton Harbor, man, what a legacy in Southwest Michigan. That is the tradition rich program of Michigan basketball. And they are 20 and 0 again this year, and they've got it rolling despite losing a ton of people to graduation last year. And then they replaced a ton of people to graduation with all seniors, a senior laden team. All their starters are seniors. They're all super talented, and it can be a different guy every single night. That's what it's been. They have their stars, but it can be a different piece every time, and that's what led them to a 20 and 0 record to this point in the year. A lot of seniors back for Brandywine too. The difference is they were playing last year. In fact, they were playing at the Breslin Center in the Final Four, and Nate Knapp's team is 16 and three, and they got it rolling again. One of those three losses was to Benton Harbor. That's something that's probably on their minds here tonight because this is the team that they haven't been able to beat. It's the bigger school, no doubt, but they want this win bad. Yeah, they made it to Breslin, but this is a great test for them at this point in the year in front of this great crowd in their home gym. They want to win this one. They want to win a conference title. Bo Benton Harbor, 20-0. They're ranked number three in Division II. They've got aspirations of going to the Breslin Center and all the pressure would appear to be on them tonight. But then again, they're kind of used to that, aren't they? Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest things. They're used to that pressure week in and week out. Everybody's trying to knock them off. Team that's undefeated. And with Brandywine losing to them the last time, the pressure's still on Benton Harbor again to win the conference outright. If Benton Harbor was able to win this game, they could possibly share a crown in that conference title. But with Benton Harbor, pressure's always been on them. It's still on them tonight. Packed house, cross the state line. A lot of excitement in here, guys. It's homecoming here at Brandywine. The Tigers have come to spoil the party. And your seat, well, it was sold over an hour and a half ago. You got the best one being with us right here. We'll get you ready with the St. Joe County Police Department keys to win. And it comes your way next on the 46th game of the week. This is the WHME TV 46 High School Basketball Game of the Week. Brought to you by Bill's Heating, Health Markets, Tony Letcher, St. Joseph County Police Department, Tire Rack, Health Link, Crown Trophy, Ben Soft Pretzels, API St. Andrews Products, Imagineering Finishing Technologies, and the IHSAA. And this edition of the 46th Game of the Week is being brought to you in part by the St. Joseph County Police Department. Join the team and help protect and serve our community. There was a girls varsity game beforehand. Brandywine, one of the top five teams in Division Three, had Miley Young going to the hoop early and often. Ellie Knapp 
headed to Holy Cross College down in South Bend. Got the layup there. This one was all Brandywine, and folks, uh, the highlights would bear that out. Adeline Gill and then Lily Gill scoring here. It's back to Young, who had another basket. Lexi Troop, Brandywine scored the first 25 points of the game as Cadence Ballman and the Bobcats go on to a 66-19 win over the Tigers. Now let's get you ready for the boys game here between Benton Harbor and Brandywine on our St. Joseph County Police Department pregame show. Time now for our keys to win. We'll start with the visiting Benton Harbor Tigers. They're led by Mr. Double-Double Josiah King. 18 points, nine rebounds a game. He went off for 31 and 12 the first time these two teams played up at Farnham Gym. The 6'5 senior is really a physical presence on the inside, and he'll get a lot of help from their savvy guard, Antoine Callahan, the 6'2 senior, the lone starter returning from last year's team, the leading scorer at 18.4 points a game. He also leads them with six and a half assists a game. He leads them in steals. He's just a true leader on this team. The keys to win for the veteran, Corey Sterling and the Tigers. Play good half court defense. They're really good at the press, so that's not one of the keys. They gotta get better at the half court defense as Coach Sterling. They gotta win the boards, and they gotta get their quick points in transition that always makes them dangerous. In his 12th season, Corey Sterling on the respect he has for his opponent tonight, Brandywine. I mean, they, they see you there too, I mean, the twins, they went to the Breslin Center last year. So that got us our attention a lot. And we really rooting for them, you know, other than when they play us. But we proud of everything Brandywine doing. It's a great community. I mean, we blessed to have this game tonight, you know, in the sold out arena. Meanwhile, for the Brandywine Bobcats, you'll meet Jeremiah Palmer in a moment. But first, let's tell you about their leading scorer, and that's Byron Lindley, the 6'1 senior at 15 points and three and a half rebounds a game. He can light it up from beyond the arc. He is a 36% three-point shooter. Benton Harbor held him down to 14 the first time the two teams played. And then Jeremiah Palmer, six-foot senior. He averages 13 points, six rebounds a game. He's their best offensive rebounder and in-paint scorer. But he missed most of the first game with Benton Harbor, ejected for an altercation with Mustafa Muhammad. Boy, he really wants to make amends here tonight in front of the home crowd. The keys to win for Nate Knapp and the Bobcats. Avoid leak outs, box out. You can't lose the rebounding battle against Benton Harbor and stop vertical transition. That is what Benton Harbor is known to do. Get those easy points. They got to prevent that from happening. Here's Nathan Knapp in his 19th season on what his team is still working on at this point in the season. We're working on uh, playing good teams and putting 32 minutes together. I mean, we've put stretches where we put, you know, 28, 29 together, but we've got the full 32 we want to get. Uh, Benton Harbor is a great team. They're going to test us that whole time for 32 minutes, you know, and that's the caliber we want to be at, up and down. And we really want to focus on trying to clean up the glass tonight and take care of the ball. They're two of the biggest things we want to take care of tonight. What an electric atmosphere here in the Bobcat Den tonight. The undefeated Benton Harbor Tigers are in. They're ranked number three. Brandywine's ranked number five. Something's got to give with the Lakeland Conference title on the line. We'll give you the starting lineups and have the opening tip next on 46.
showdown between the visiting Tigers of Penn Harbor and your Spring One Bobcats. At this time, would you all please rise, gentlemen, remove your caps for the singing of our national anthem, sung by the Brain One Triple Airs under the direction of Alicia Savage. And this edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Tire Rack. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. They're getting ready to introduce the starting lineups in front of the sellout crowd here at the Bobcat Den. We'll do it too. Here's Angelo DiCarlo. Benton Harbor will start all seniors. Mustafa Muhammad, 6'5", forward, averaging 11.5 points and 6.5 rebounds per game. He did not play much of the first game, got ejected in that contest. Antoine Callahan, a 6'2", guard, 18.5 points, 6.5 assists, 2.5 steals per game. Jaden Meeks, 6'4", forward. He was sick for the first game against Brandywine. 4.4 points per game. Josiah King, 6'6", six, six forward, 18 points, 9 rebounds a contest. And Javon Mason, a 6'3", forward, 8.6 points and 5 rebounds a contest. The Brandywine starting lineup is brought to you by Brandywine Athletics. The Brandywine Athletic Department is proud to sponsor all student-athletes. Let's show our Bobcat pride and cheer on our athletes to victory. Go Bobcats! Brandywine will start Jameer Palmer, a six foot senior guard, 9.7 points, 4.7 assists per game, averaging 3.7 steals per game. Nylon Goins, a 5'11 sophomore guard, 11.8 points per game, has 33s this season. Robert Whiting, a 5'9 senior guard, 5.3 points per game. Jeremiah Palmer, a six foot senior guard, the other twin, other Palmer twin, 12.9 points, 6.1 rebounds per game. And Byron Lindley, 6'1", senior forward, averaging 14.8 points and 38 threes this season. And there you see the officiating crew for tonight's game. Mark Kenya working with Robert King and Dan Starr. They also worked the girls game as well. And it looks like we've had one slight change in the starting lineup here tonight at the last minute. I see Brock Dye came out in the starting lineup tonight. He is a six foot senior and the reason you would use him is to get some more physicality on the inside. So they went ahead and they replaced Robert Whiting with Brock Dye. Benton Harbor is in the orange with the black numerals. Brandywine is in the white with the maroon. The opening tip is being brought to us by Scrappers Rescue. And Scrapper's Rescue in downtown Niles is rescuing animals to train as service dogs for veterans and the disabled. With funds raised in your donations, Scrapper's Resale Shop can provide help, veterinary care, and supplies for those in need in our pet community. Antoine Callahan leaves it off for Mustafa Muhammad. The senior gets it over to Jaden Meeks. Here's Callahan for the 20-0 Tigers, who have won every game by double digits 
Muhammad nearly traveled, but didn't. They beat Brandywine 72-59 back in January. Josiah King turns and scores. So King gets the first basket of the game. And the Tigers are on the board. Here's Brandywine. They have a record of 16 and 3. Their losses came to Richard, Benton Harbor, and Portage Central. That one was last Saturday. That's Jameer Palmer. He left it off for his brother Jeremiah, who is fouled on the way up. And we'll go to the foul line for free throw sponsored by Michiana Rental. And now, take another look on the Bobcat replay. Now serving Benton Harbor for graduations, weddings, and equipment rentals. Michiana Rental gives a shout out to all the Benton Harbor student athletes. Good luck and go Tigers. Jeremiah Palmer, 62% foul shooter on the year, hits the first. Palmer, a three-sport athlete, real good inside-out threat. Wants to major in sports medicine someday. Rimmed home the second as well, we're not at it too. Callahan brings it across the stripe for the Tigers. And it's nearly knocked away, but recovered by Mason. And he went over and back for the first turnover of the game. Well, you can feel the impact of the crowd already and what excitement is in the air. And how about the pressure defense here by Brandywine in the early going right there? Surprising Benton Harbor, I think, a little bit with that trap. Goins, the sophomore, handles it up top. The only non-senior on the floor. Jameer Palmer, back to Gones. He'll take it down the left side, and Dye stepped out of bounds. Now hiring, Montanier is looking for talented individuals to join our team. Montanier provides the machinery, tools, and training required to produce superior results. Your success at Montanier is our priority. Be successful and shape your career with us. Apply now, Montanier.com. They sponsor our first quarter, which has saw Josiah King get off to a great start. He's got all four for the Benton Harbor Tigers. He's the captain and our 46th student athlete of the week that you'll hear at halftime here coming up. Goins, double teamed. Now in the corner, Jeremiah Palmer. And he'll back it out. Brandywine usually plays at a pretty fierce clip, but I think they're content to maybe take their time and look for good shots. Unfortunately for them, Jameer Palmer just missed the three, but it's a turnover on Benton Harbor. Benton Harbor trying to get the easy points on the outlet pass, but Brandywine never able to get the steal. And Brock Dye is fouled by Antoine Callahan, and that is the first on Callahan. Ben Soft Pretzels has been supporting high school athletics since 2008. They believe that sports are an important part of a well-rounded education and are proud to support the next generation of athletes. Find Ben Soft Pretzels at the University Park Mall and at most major Notre Dame athletic events. Have a pretzel day. Byron Lindley for three. And the Bobcats take their first lead of the night. We told you, Lindley, a 36% three-point shooter on the season. King directs traffic for the Tigers. He wants Muhammad to clear out a little bit of room. Muhammad trying to work on Lindley. And scores. That was not easy. It was pretty well defended, but Mustafa Muhammad gets the basket. He averages 11 points a game. Goins needs help. Die couldn't hang on. Here comes Callahan. And that's one of the things Benton Harbor can do so well is turn defense into offense in a hurry. And a technical foul is called. There was some jawing going up and down the floor, and I think they banged Antoine Callahan for the technical. And that will be his second. Here's the replay and the lay-in. And then maybe right there was the reason, perhaps, for the technical, I'm not sure, or the talking. Remember, two players did get ejected from this game the first time they met. So maybe the officials trying to settle things from the get-go, preventing something like that from happening again here tonight. Michiana Rental sponsors the free throws about to be taken by Byron Lindley. The problem for Benton Harbor is Antoine Callahan is their leading scorer and just picked up his second foul. Three minutes into the game. 
Be Crafty gives a shout out to all the Brandywine student athletes. Good luck and go Bobcats. Paint your own pottery and canvas. Peyton Studio is located in downtown Niles. Walk in anytime to paint or glaze your art project. We host a variety of events, birthdays, bachelorette parties, showers, various events, and more. Visit BACraftyB.com or find us on Facebook. So Lindley goes one of two at the stripe. You see Brock Dye check out. And indeed, Robert Whiting, the 5'9 senior, has come into the game. Callahan staying in the game with those two fouls, the only returning starter for Fed Harbor from a year ago. Lindley through the back door for two. He has six already. Excellent pass there to get the ball inside the Lindley for the bucket. Tied at eight and some brilliant offensive execution in the early going by both teams. Well, you can see why both teams are ranked top five. Except for right there would be one of those reasons that you want to get back and that's the turnover. Callahan was expecting Muhammad to cut. He didn't, threw it away. Three turnovers for Benton Harbor, two for Brandywine here in the first four minutes of this game. Here's Whiting. He finds Palmer, and Palmer will contact it going to the hoop. And let's see who they'll call it on. It's going to go on Jaden Meeks, and that's the first on him. And here's the replay brought to you by Brandywine Athletics. Goes inside, tripped up. Non-shooting foul coming up, and it'll be inbound for Brandywine. Well before the shot, as you can see on the Brandywine replay. Lindley to trigger the inbound. And Lindley steps in and brings the three. He is red hot early with nine. 6-0 Bobcat run. That was a fantastic inbound play. A little give and go action. Look at the handles from Josiah King. He lost it on the way up and he'll go to the line for two. But here's another look at the Lindley three from Brandywine Athletics. Good inbound, get it right back to the inbounder and Lindley in the corner, deadly from outside. I don't know if Byron's a fisherman, but he knows how to catch and release, that's for sure. Here's Josiah King going to the line for two, sponsored by Michiana Rental. Lake Michigan College in Benton Harbor and South Haven, Michigan is proud to support high school athletics with over 80 fields of study. Let Lake Michigan College help launch your future. Learn more at lakemichigancollege.edu or find them on Facebook. King goes one of two, but the rebound knocked out of bounds by Brandywine, so Benton Harbor will get it back. Tigers down two midway through the first. Sold out crowd. Muhammad! Elevator went right on up to the top floor for Mustafa, who now has four. Benton Harbor is five for five from the field. And yet we're tied. <laughs> that shows you how well both teams are playing here early going. Here's Jeremiah Palmer. Backing it out against King. He'll pull up from the wing, too strong, and the rebound to Benton Harbor. You expect the Tigers to dominate the glass with the size advantage. Callahan fouled on the way up, and he'll go to the line for two, sponsored by Michiana Rental. With locations in Warsaw and Elkhart, Babsco Supply is working together to serve you better as one of the largest independent 100% employee-owned electrical distributors in northern Indiana. They strive to be number one in customer service, supplying all of your electrical supplies you need whenever you need them. Bo Hunt, let's go to you for a Bills Heating Courtside report. Somebody's bleeding down there. Is that Byron Lindley? Yeah, Brian's got, he's got, Byron's Ooh. got some blood coming right down the side. It looks like, uh, just like last week, and it looked like he got hit in the uh, eyebrow area, and it's just blood just flowing down the side of his cheek and down his neck as well. Well, they're also going to have to do a little cleanup on the floor here because he was dripping onto the floor. That buys the trainer a little bit of time to work on Lindley. We'll take a break. 3.12 to go first quarter. Tied at 11 on 46.
this edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Imagineering Finishing Technologies, IFT, where quality is a way of life. So they continue to tend to Byron Lindley in the trainer's room. Meanwhile, Antoine Callahan, a 58% foul shooter, goes to the line for free throw sponsored by Michiana Rental to try to give the Tigers the lead. Michiana Rental is a premier equipment rental in Benton Harbor, effective rental solutions for equipment and party rental items for special events, best customer service, and competitive rates. Callahan had 21 points and 11 rebounds the first time these two teams played up at the fabulous Farnham Gym. Also had a triple-double this year against Frederick Douglass out of Detroit. One of two at the stripe, and Jeremiah Palmer is fouled by Muhammad, and that's his second. Now hiring Modineer is looking for talented individuals to join our team. Modineer provides the machinery, tools, and training required to produce superior results. Your success at Modineer is our priority. Be successful and shape your career with us. Apply now, Modineer.com. Nate Knapp gets the attention of the officials. That's the fifth foul on Benton Harbor. So Brandywine gets to go to the foul line with Jeremiah Palmer, who is a 62% free throw shooter, taking free throws sponsored by Michiana Rentals. And thank you, Michiana Rentals. They're sponsoring the free throws for both teams in both halves here tonight. And if anything, maybe trips to the free throw line buy some time here for Brandywine, for Byron Lindley, who's their leading scorer with nine points here tonight. Still in the trainer's room. They're cleaning up that eye. They got a I would be surprised, Chuck, if he comes out with a new jersey number based on how much blood was on the jersey as well. Absolutely. Palmer hits his free throws. He's four for four at the stripe tonight. Brandywine back in front. Brandywine way, Athletic Department congratulates the student athletes on hard work and dedication. Good luck tonight. Go Bobcats. Nice feed from Josiah King and Jaden Meeks with our second dunk of the night. Benton Harbor now six for six from the field. Down low to Dye who lays it up for two. Brock Dye with his first basket. He only averages three a game. What a pace. You know, Meeks did not play, as I mentioned, in that first game, so he's been eager to be able to play here in this one. King for three. Light it up. He has eight in the first. And the Tigers are now seven of seven from the field. Palmer with the left hand, excuse me, that was Whiting who missed it. At the other end, Callahan's teardrop misses and it's knocked out of bounds. Iron Shoe, which is the Brandywine student athletes, good luck tonight and go Bobcats. Iron Shoe voted the number one restaurant in Niles, serving the Highest quality burgers and fries, family-friendly atmosphere, food and beverages, crafted with love. Jameer Palmer outside for Brandywine. Jameer found his twin coming, and he was fouled from behind by Rodney Ford. We'll get a pair of free throws here coming up. Brought to you by Michiana Rental as you take a look at the replay. Brought to you by Brandywine Athletics. Good look, and the contact from behind is what prevented that shot from going in as he heads to, heads to the free throw line. This game's health tip is brought to you by Health Link. Healthy kids are better students and better athletes. Schedule an annual wellness checkup at Health Link today. Health Link offers medical, dental, vision, and more. Brock Dye coming to the bench. J.T. Smith takes his place in the lineup. Palmer missed the first free throw. He's 4 or 5 at the line tonight. And that back cut that he made, a little bit of the twin communication that they talked about during the week here at Brandywine. Jameer and Jeremiah have been playing together all their lives, and they just understand where they're going to be on the floor. So, too, does Javon Mason as he goes in for the bucket there. And then a steal by Callahan, who missed the layup. The rebound bounces around and collected by Meeks. Ford into the paint. Now the pull up by Mason, rattles home. Mason with a quick four points, and Benton Harbor's up five. Crowd getting into it. Jeremiah Palmer with a big three for Brandywine. 
They are three of four outside the arc. Jeremiah with eight. Brandon Wine doing an excellent job holding things together with their star Lindley on the, well, not even on the bench, in the trainer's room still. King going through the back door, and we have a blocking foul called on Brandywine. It'll go on Jeremiah Palmer. Crowd didn't like it, but he was just a tad slow getting over. Whether you're looking for construction, equipment, tools, or party rental items, Michiana Rental has the right solution for you. Find us for all your rental needs. MTRental.com, MTRental.com. Not a shooting foul, so Benton Harbor has to inbound to Jaden Meeks, the quarterback on the football team, playing with two different colored shoes. Intentionally, by the way. Here's the drive and the foul called on Jameer Palmer, and that'll send Javon Mason to the line for free throws, sponsored by the aforementioned Michiana Rental. And Brandywine Athletic Department, proud to sponsor all student athletes and show our Bobcat pride. and. Cheer on our athletes to victory. Go Bobcats. Mason, a 62% foul shooter. Missed last season with an injury. He's a three-sport athlete for Benton Harbor. Running back and linebacker on the football team and a sprinter in track. As you see, Ethan Adamchat, Adamzak check into the game. Adamzak, a six-foot senior. One of two at the stripe, and Callahan collected the loose change, and it's tipped out of bounds by Palmer. <laughs> Meanwhile, Brandywine going to use that bench again. Big Will Hubbard, the 6'5 freshman, comes in, and Lindley has come back from the trainer's room and is sitting on the bench. That's why you heard the big cheer from the crowd. Got that badge on his eyes you saw there, and... Still wearing number 11, so they got that uh, magic marker out and were able to clean it up. Callahan double teamed, whips it down to Ford for the layup. Rodney Ford with his first basket. Such great balance on this Benton Harbor team. Underneath, it's Hubbard missing the layup, and Benton Harbor with another rebound. Great defense by Antoine Callahan, preventing that basket from going in. Meeks misses. Rebound to the harbor, and the clock expires in an exciting <laughs> first quarter here at the Bobcat Den. Benton Harbor and Brandywine. My goodness, it's like Ali and Frazier at the Garden. They're just exchanging haymakers, folks, and it's 24-19 Tigers after one on 46. And this edition of the 46 game of the week being brought to you in part by Bill's Heating, keeping families and businesses comfortable since 1951. Probably not comfortable where Bill, where Bo Hunt is down there on the court tonight, but let's hear what he has to say about that first quarter of the Bill's Heating sideline report. Yeah, we knew it was going to be very exciting. A lot of emotion out here, packed house in here. I think the first quarter, really with Benton Harbor, ability to move the ball around and a lot of people score. Six guys in the scoring column for Benton Harbor, really able to move it around. A lot of guys able to put the ball, ball in the hoop. For Brandywine, you know, with Finley going out, I think that really hurt them because that's when they really started to get down and lose the lead, guys. All right, let's see if he comes back, and he does for the second quarter. I, a I, quarter I, brought to us by Modineer. But to Bo's point, they were still able to weather the storm. To be only down by five against an electric team like Benton Harbor is pretty impressive when you have your guy who scored nine points before he got the blood coming out of the game, and now he's back in here in the second quarter. One reason they did that, they went six of eight at the foul line and three of four from three-point range. Palmer really came up big for him. Whiting is trapped, can't get out of it, and five seconds goes against the Bobcats for their fourth turnover of the night. Now hiring, Montanier is looking for talented individuals to join our team. Montanier provides the machinery, tools, and training required to produce superior results. Your success at Montanier is our priority. Be successful and shape your career with us. Apply now, Montanier.com. King's foul line jumper is off. Callahan had it stripped away, but he'll go to the line for two. And Benton Harbor is burying Brandywine on the boards right now, 7-2. to two. 
Three, these free throws coming up brought to you by Michiana Rental. As you take a look at the replay, brought to you by Brandywine Athletics. There you see the foul as Callahan was going up and he'll go to the free throw line. Imagineering Finishing Technologies in South Bend is globally known as the knowledge source for metal finishing solutions. Like the teams in this game, Imagineering is always working towards a great finish. Thank you, Imagineering, for your continued support of high school sports on TV 46. Antoine Callahan, the 6'2 senior, averaging 18 a game, misses both free throws. And that's a huge break for the Bobcats, who trail by five. Lindley back in the game, looking to drive. Kicks it outside, three on the way is an air ball by Whiting. At the other end, Benton Harbor thwarted. Nylon Gomes with the defense. Here's Lindley all the way in, missed the layup. Hubbard the rebound, had it stripped away. Meeks off of Callahan and out of bounds, it's Brandy Warren Ball. Brandy Wine fans wanted the travel, they didn't get it, but he ended up throwing the ball away anyway. Take a look at the replay brought to you by Brandy Wine Athletics. Driving inside. I think he might have gotten rid of it just in time, but it didn't matter because he threw it into the Brandywine student section. Brock died taking the place of Will Hubbard. Mustafa Muhammad with two fouls comes back in the game here for Benton Harbor. So Benton Harbor, Corey Sterling rolling the dice a little bit here with Muhammad and Callahan both on the court here in the second quarter with two fouls. Callahan's been on the court. He got those two fouls in the first three minutes of the first quarter. Whiting pulls up. Now throws it out for Goings, and Goings couldn't hit, but the rebound to Lindley. Whiting down the baseline, couldn't hit. The rebound comes to Mason. And the layup hit by Antoine Callahan. He now has five. That's the first basket of the second quarter for either team, and how quickly he moved the ball up the court in transition. Just so hard for Brandywine to defend. Benton Harbor plays with tremendous speed, and they get a block shot from Muhammad against Lindley. The battle for the loose ball is on. Look at the bodies hit the floor, and a timeout called by Benton Harbor. We'll take it as well. 6.03 to go in the first half. 26-19 Tigers on 46. And this edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Crown Trophy. They're nationally known and locally owned. The Lilliard Insurance Agency in Osceola believes in the importance of high school sports. They're locally owned and can assist with all your insurance needs. Visit realvalueins.com to learn more. Lilliard Insurance, real people, real service, real value. Chuck, it's not only sold out. They joke you're hanging from the rafters. Here you're hanging from the railings, quite literally, right next to us. How many people are just sitting on the railings here in the upper deck in the balcony to try to get a seat in the standing room only crowd here at the Bobcat Den, and you, there, you, there you see it. And you also see the Lakeland Conference standings and the importance of this game. Benton Harbor trying to wrap up the conference title with a victory over Brandywine tonight. If Brandywine wins, those two teams share the conference title. That was the case last year when they when they met, and that one went in favor of Benton Harbor at the buzzer. It's been exciting so far. The Tigers leading with their biggest lead of the night by seven, as Antoine Callahan will bring it across for Benton Harbor. There are a lot of points in that first quarter. Things have settled down a little bit. Benton Harbor has outscored Brandywine two to nothing here through the first few minutes of the second quarter. Josiah King a little short on that shot and the rebound to Jameer Palmer. At the other end, Jeremiah Palmer for the layup. Excellent, excellent outlet pass there by Brandywine to get that bucket. Callahan misses, Ford is there. It's like watching Cirque du Soleil. And a steal by Callahan. He feeds Muhammad who charged. That's his third. 
We want to thank Front Street Pizza for feeding the production crew tonight. Front Street Pizza features handcrafted pizza and so much more. With downtown Niles, beautiful Riverside as their backdrop, they bring an exciting new approach to dining and entertainment. Give them a try this weekend. You won't be disappointed. Front Street Pizza in Niles. Jaquan Lewis has taken Muhammad's place in the Benton Harbor lineup. Three on the way from Goins is short, and the rebound to Rodney Ford. Brandywine has missed its last three three-pointers. Steal by Jeremiah Palmer. Showtime for the lift. Oh, the crowd wanted Jeremiah to send it in, but hey, Jeremiah took the sure two. That's, that's the thing. Take the sure two. It might fire up the crowd, but you want to make it. That's the most important thing. Ford for three. Too strong. And Callahan called for a push-off, or is it on Meeks? It's on Callahan. That's his third. Now let's see. If, I got to think he's got to be coming out of the game now. In fact, actually, a player came up off the bench and said, you want me to go in? Corey Sterling waved them off at first, but now they'll send someone to the scorer's table and we'll see if Callahan's going to come out of the game. Jeremiah Palmer throws it away, and that allows Callahan to exit as Demarion Bell checks in, a 5'10 senior. Six turnovers apiece now for these teams midway through the second quarter. But now Benton Harbor with about an average of 30 points a game sitting on the bench with three fouls each in Muhammad and Callahan. And we'll see who else steps up for a very deep Tiger team. That's three on the way from Jaquan Lewis. It's no good and knocked out of bounds by Benton Harbor. For more than 20 years, Michiana Rentals serving the Niles community need party, graduation, or wedding rental items. Michiana Rental has you covered cheering for the Bobcats. Good luck. So now Benton Harbor is going to apply full court pressure to try to find some different ways to create some offense with defense. Goins, who's been quiet on the scoreboard tonight, gives it off to Palmer. They go down low to die, and he doesn't like the matchup with King. I don't blame him. And Brandywine steps out of bounds. The thing about Benton Harbor, even though they've got some guys on the bench, they have had eight different players score in double figures this season. So they have depth on this team, and they've got people that can put the ball in the hoop. And through the first 12 minutes here tonight, six different guys have already scored for the Tigers. Lewis handles it up top. Outside it goes to Meeks for three. That's too strong, but King is there. Missed the dunk, but he'll go to the line for two. These free throws brought to you by Michiana Rental. Together we are building a strong and united Brandywine community that celebrates success both on and off the field, supporting their academic and athletic goals and the values of sportsmanship, perseverance, and respect. Go Bobcats. And the free throw hit by King. Jeremiah Palmer just picked up his third foul for Brandywine. So he'll check out the lineup and Robert Whiting goes in to replace him. And Nate Knapp not exactly thrilled with the fact that one of his top scorers has to come out of this one. King hits both. He has 10 tonight. Back to a seven point Benton Harbor lead. I'd say King is as advertised, but pretty much everybody is as advertised here tonight. Goins tried to get that one to go in from the holster. It wouldn't quite go, but he'll go to the free throw line for a free throw sponsored by Michiana Rental. Freezing temperatures, sleet, snow, and ice have been here. They kind of came into the picture a little bit here today as well. Are your tires ready to tackle whatever may be coming in Michiana next? The experts at TireRack.com will get your vehicle ready for prime time. They sell tires that dominate all seasons. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Goins, a 65% free throw shooter, and he went one of two that time at the strike. Meeks gets the rebound for Benton Harbor. Tigers by six. Still a lot of time left first half. They wanted to double team Bell, but he was too quick for that. Kicked it outside, three on the way by Mason. Misses. Battle for the rebound goes to Benton Harbor. Good hard fought battle by both players there. Tigers will retain possession. They got six turnovers here tonight. Brandywine with seven. The Tigers, if they have a weakness, it's their three point shooting. 
They were one of five tonight. They were two of 11 in the first half against Lakeshore the other night. There's a two-pointer missed by Mason, but again, Brandywine cannot control the rebound. And the other night, after going two of 11 in the first half against Lakeshore, Corey Sterling said, okay, let's stop shooting three-pointers. And it worked really well. They shot 59% in the second half and came from behind to beat the Lancers by 14. Yeah, down by five at halftime, probably the most game pressure they have felt. And they will still get away with the victory. Josiah King wants to go one-on-one -on -one and miss the three. But again, the rebound to Benton Harbor. Bell misses that one. How about a fifth opportunity on this possession? Brandywine doing themselves no favors right now. Finally, they get a turnover. Guy is able to come away with it. And a foul from behind on Demarion Bell. That's his first. Take a look at the replay brought to you by Brandywine Athletics. Coming up the court, no question about that one. Was trying to get the steal, but got a lot of that white jersey. That's the fourth foul on Benton Harbor here in the second quarter. Goins handling things up top. JT Smith for three. Too strong, and the rebound comes to Mason. Brandywine has been unable to to reduce the margin here with Muhammad and Callahan out of the game. King was able to drive in strong and draw the foul on Brock Dye. And so Josiah King, who's been pretty good from the foul line tonight, goes back to the stripe for free throw sponsored by Michiana Rental. St. Joseph County Police Department is here to protect and serve our community. They're looking for more people to join their team. Employment opportunities for high school graduates are available. They offer outstanding benefits and a true family environment on their team. Learn more at sjcindiana.com slash employment. Josiah, a member of the all 2K showcase team, goes one of two, and Dye finally is able to get the free throw, but a held ball alternating possession goes to Benton Harbor. We hear from Josiah, our 46th student athlete of the week, presented by Tony Letcher of Health Markets. That interview coming up at halftime. Along with Gavin Shope of Brandywine, their number one ranked wrestler in the state of Michigan. King travels. Probably the one area both of these top five teams would want to clean up is on the turnovers. That's number eight for Benton Harbor. Seven, meanwhile, for Brandywine here in the first half. I think part of that, though, is they rarely face teams that are able to defend as well as these two are. Robert Whiting kicks it outside to J.T. Smith. Back to Whiting. Nate Knapp, watching this play unfold, calls out a new one. Was not comfortable with how that looked out there. Defense for Benton Harbor the last several minutes has been fantastic. They have not allowed Brandywine to get any form of a good look. And Lindley's not getting the ball at all, so they go back to J.T. Smith, but he can't hit. And here comes Meeks the other way with another rebound. Well, they got King stuck on Lindley, <laughs> preventing him from getting the ball. Here's another turnover for Benton Harbor. Well, that's how Lindley gets the ball, is on the steal, and he'll shovel it to Whiting, who missed the layup. But the size of Benton Harbor creating these missed shots and transition opportunities for Jaquan Lewis. Demarion Bell with an unbelievable play, diving to the ground and feeding his teammate for the bucket. We might see that one later tonight. Whew. What Whiting a play. Handling it up on the wing. Oh, nearly a travel by Goins. Instead, he tries to go back door to Whiting, and it's shut off beautifully by Meeks. Meeks's defense has been terrific here in the second quarter. Three on the way. That one's off the mark as well. And the ball saved inbounds. Lindley for three. That's off as well. Brandywine has missed its last six three-pointers. Meanwhile, the shot missed there and knocked out of bounds by Meeks. It'll go to Brandywine. Well, Lindley has not made a shot since coming back from the locker room after getting busted up in the eye. In fact, Brandywine only has five points here in the second quarter after scoring 19 in the first frame. And Nate Knapp wants a 30-second timeout to set up this last 17 seconds. The timeout sponsored by Modnier. 
The Brandywine High School Athletics encourages participation in sports and uh, extracurricular activities to promote teamwork, leadership, and healthy lifestyle choices. Reminder, the high school basketball continues. Saturday afternoon on TV 46, we'll take you to the 3A girls basketball semi-state in Huntington as Northwood and Bremen, those US six rivals, only 15 minutes apart, they'll go an hour down the road to play, and we'll have it, Northwood and Bremen, Saturday at five on 46. The band making noise here. Great to have them, and look at their perch up there behind the rails, and as Anj mentioned, they are draped over every railing here tonight like bunting. And everyone's even in the corners. It's, it is not a big gym. There's not much space outside of the physical court itself. And yet people are standing there everywhere. They're in the stage as well here. They put extra seating up there. Final 10 seconds, you see the clock on the TireRack.com scoreboard. Back door, it goes to J.T. Smith, and he lost it out of bounds. Benton Harbor has three seconds, 2.8 to be exact, to try to make something happen and add to a nine-point lead. Demarion Bell will take it from three-point range. It's off the mark, and that's the way the first half ends with Benton Harbor leading Brandywine by a count of 33-24. to 24. We're going to take it downstairs to Bo Hunt for a Bills heating courtside report. And Bo is standing by with Nate Knapp. Coach, you go into halftime down by nine. Lindley goes out, gets hit in the head. Jeremiah picks up his third foul. Rebounding was a little bit of a struggle for you guys in the first half. Just your thoughts as well. Just same thing. I agree with you 100%. Downfall, we're not executing offensively. We're getting looks. We're not hitting. We're getting beat up on the glass. We're taking a step back. we got to do a better job boxing out, getting rebounds. Offensively, we're going to be fine, but we got to get. We have to have the Palmer boys on the floor, and we got to have Byron going too. Right now, they're face guarding Byron. We got to do a better job, get him on some ball screens, get some backdoor slips too, because they're trying to take him out of it. We haven't recognized that. We've been yelling it, so hopefully, we'll get in there and make that adjustment. Hey, thanks for your time, Nate. All right, thanks. Back to you guys. An electric first half. Look at the feed from Demarion Bell to Jaquan Lewis, part of the reason Benton Harbor leads by nine. Our Tony Letcher Student Athletes of the Week are next on 46. Six student athletes of the week presented by Tony Letcher of Health Markets. Outstanding Brandywine wrestler Gavin Shope representing Brandywine tonight, along with Josiah King, the Benton Harbor senior basketball captain whose team is 20 0 in the year. Josiah, to be the captain of this team that's undefeated on the year, tell us a little bit about the importance of leadership and what that means to you. So, a big thing with us is holding each other accountable, listening to each other, trusting each other. You know, just having faith in each other. That's how we. That's why we're undefeated right now. What What's it like playing on a team with all senior starters? I mean, it's amazing because they're they're my boys off the court. We take pride in being the seniors and the under underclassmen looking up to us. All right, you have some college offers. What would it mean to you to be able to go play uh, some college basketball? I mean, it's it's more than basketball. I get to go to the next level by just showcasing my talent. So it's a big thing for me. All right, and finally, what does being a Benton Harbor Tiger mean to you? I mean, it's amazing, man. Every year, we strive for a big goal to go to state championship, no matter what. Saya, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, Gavin Schof is our student athlete representing Brandywine here tonight. He is the number one ranked wrestler in the state in Division Four, and he's also a great football player as well. But being ranked number one in wrestling, uh, what does that mean to you? And tell us about all the hard work it takes to be to make that happen. You know, I feel appreciated to be uh, recognized as for all the hard work that I put in. You know, I've been wrestling for 12 years of my life, and you know, that's what I've done a lot of practice, a lot of off-season work. You know, it's just nice to be recognized for all that hard work that I put in. And while Josiah has plans on going to play basketball in college, you're going to go into the Plumbers Union. And so the end of the season is going to be it for you for wrestling. Tell us why you're planning on uh, going into the union for plumbing. Uh, I plan on going to the union because of a family-owned business. My father has put in a lot of work to get that business working. So I'd like to take it over after he leaves. All right, give him a free shout-out. You can give that a 
Quick shout out. Uh, the business is Nagatsky Plumbing out of South Bend. Uh, David Show was my dad. All right, cool. What, how's Brandywine shaped who you are and gotten you to this point? Uh, it's taught me that you need to put in a lot of hard work. You know, coming from a small school, you don't, we don't get like the nicest things. You know, you gotta, it, it teaches you with, to build adversity and make you tougher as a human, I think. It's a good attribute for a wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> All right, congratulations, Gavin. Josiah, congratulations again. Josiah King. Gavin Shope, our 46 Student Athletes of the Week, presented by Tony Letcher with Health Markets. We have your first half stats and highlights right after this. You're watching the TV 46 Game of the Week. And this edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to you in part by the St. Joseph County Police Department. Join the team and help protect and serve our community. Benton Harbor leads at 33-24 in those top five showdown at the Bobcat Den as we welcome you to our perch in the balcony high above the fray tonight. Chuck and Ange, and boy, what a great atmosphere. Great offensive first quarter, but I really think the difference in the second quarter was the defense and rebounding to Benton Harbor. No question. It was 24-19 after one quarter. Then Benton Harbor outscored Brandywine just 9-5 in the second quarter. So Brandywine has to be very proud of their defense in the second quarter. The problem was they weren't able to score. They weren't able to penetrate because Benton Harbor was just nails down, preventing every shot and making it difficult every step of the way in that second quarter. Let's show you how it got to be this way. Inside the Bobcat then as Benton Harbor was able to fire the first salvo with Josiah King scoring two points inside. He had 11 in the first half. Brandywine came back as Byron Lindley was hot from outside the arc. Nice drive here by Mustafa Muhammad, but he had foul trouble. Lindley scores off the inbound pass. He had nine in the first half. Here's Muhammad going up for the dunk. And then another one here from Jaden Meeks. His only two points of the first half, but he played some great defense. Antoine Callahan had five points, but he missed a lot of time with foul trouble too. At the other end, Jeremiah Palmer was able to get that layup and then a steal and a layup. This got Randy Wine within five, but that's as close as they get in the second quarter because Benton Harbor was able to get the bleak out here to Jaquan Lewis for the lay-in. They lead it by nine, and a big reason, the shooting percentage. They have defended Brandy Wine well. 48% from the field, Benton Harbor, just 30% from the field for Brandywine. Brandywine, three of 11 from three. Two of those were from Lindley. Lindley has not scored a point since he went out with that eye injury, came back into the game, had it patched up and worked on, but he hasn't scored. And quite frankly, maybe just got out of rhythm after being out of the game. So they got to get him going. He had nine points in that first quarter. They have no chance if they can't get him going in the third quarter. Benton Harbor could be six quarters away from their first 22-0 season in school history. To do it, they're going to have to hold off Brandywine here in the second half. Bobcats trail 33-24. We're back with second half play-by-play -play from Niles Township after this on 46.
this edition of the 46 game of the week being brought to you in part by health link it's your community health center let's go downstairs for bill's heating courtside report bo hunt what corey sterling have to say after that first half yeah i got a chance to talk to corey a little bit asked him about the first half and how he thought about it. he said you know we knew it was gonna be a very physical very fast-paced game you know we we're happy with the way we've played he goes, right now we're taking it as a 0-0 ball game. Second half, we have to win the second half regardless of what the score is. Asked him about foul trouble, and he said, yeah, understand we have some, but we go 8-9 deep. We're, we're okay, Bo. Back to you guys. And it did not seem to bother them. They didn't lose a step with two leading scorers like Muhammad and Callahan on the bench, and I don't know how many teams can really do that. Especially in the defense, Ben. If anything, it felt like the defense got even better, which is... Hard to imagine, but it, it, it seemed that way. And now Callahan and Muhammad are back out there to start the third quarter. So he'll put him out there and see if this will be big, whether or not he can, picks up foul number four or not. The starters back for both teams as we start the third period. Brought to us by our friends at Montanier. Randy Wine will begin with the basketball. And by the way, it's still crowded here. Jameer Palmer held off the scoreboard in that first half. He normally averages 10 points a game, and he's trying to see what play they're running here. So he just pulled up, tried to three, and Benton Harbor gets a rebound. Tie up on the held ball, and it'll go to the Tigers. Actually, Chuck, Jeremiah Palmer is not in the game. He has three fouls for Brandywine, so they have kept him on the bench. So that's an interesting choice for the Bobcats. Yeah, Robert Whiting starting the second half for Brandywine. You're right. Here comes Antoine Callahan with the left-hand dribble. Callahan catching that one all the way out by half court. Now Josiah King from the wing, that's short. And here comes Lindley with the rebound in transition. Lindley for three. Off the mark, has not been the same since exiting the game with that cut. Josiah King comes all the way down. He'll try the wing jumper again, and it still won't go. And a great box out that time by Lindley. Gets an over-the-back call against Meeks. Whether you're looking for construction equipment, tools, or party rentals, Michiana Rental has the right solution for you. Find us for all of your rental needs, mtrental.com. That's mtrental.com. First foul on Benton Harbor here in the third quarter. But Brandywine, who started off awfully hot, only shot 30% in the first half, and they missed their first couple of shots here in the second half as well. Looks like Lindley has shedded the bandage that he had on, but it can't shed the defense for Benton Harbor. Javon Mason fouled on the way up by Goins, and he'll go to the foul line for free throw sponsored by Michiana Reynolds as you get another look here on the Brandywine Athletics replay. Maybe we're not going to let him get a free look to the basket there as they prevent it, and now he'll try to earn it at the free throw line. Now hiring, Montanier is looking for talented individuals to join our team. Montanier provides the machinery, tools, and training required to produce superior results. Your success at Montanier is our priority. Be successful. Shape your career with us. Apply now at Montanier.com. Javon Mason averages nine points a game. He has seven already tonight. And Benton Harbor with a double-figure lead for the first time this evening. Can the Bobcats respond? Jameer Palmer was able to shake King and gets bumped on the way up by Josiah, the first on the big fella. Well, and the other question is, how long can they afford to keep Jeremiah Palmer on the bench? with those three fouls down by 11 right now. Part of it depends on how well his twin shoots free throws sponsored by Michiana Reynolds right here. And this third quarter brought to you by Montanier. 71% foul shooter is Jameer Palmer. And here's a stat that Bo will appreciate about Jameer Palmer. All-state baseball player has over 100 stolen bases in his career. He can fly. And he can shoot free throws. Yeah. He's yet to hit a field goal here tonight. Has all his points from the free throw line. Callahan. 
breaking out the gold shoes tonight. Here's Meeks down the lane for the layup. And the Tigers quarterback on the football team has four. He becomes the seventh player to score here tonight for the Tigers. Committed to play football at Wayne State next year. Wants to be a Tartar. Appropriate on a Lenten Friday. Whiting misses die with the rebound, though. Here's Goins, and what's the call? Charging on Nylon Goins. That was one of the rare second chance opportunities Brandywine has been able to get here tonight, but unable to convert as we take a look at the replay. Brought to you by Brandywine Athletics. Ben Harbor able to get the feet set and get the charge call. Javon Mason was the one who took the charge. King short on that one, and Brock Dye hustles down the rebound. Palmer with a great feed ahead to Whiting. It's erased by Meeks. Here comes Callahan the other way for the Tigers. Euro step, missed the layup. Rebound up and in by King. And the walking double-double seems on his way to another one. He has 13. And with that 13-point lead, Jeremiah Palmer is headed to the scores table to get into the game. Lindley blocked by King, fouled by King. He'll go to the free throw line brought to you by Michiana Rental. And we'll let you know that Scrappers Rescue in downtown Niles is rescuing animals to train as service dogs for veterans and disabled. With funds raised in your donations, Scrappers Resale Shop can provide help, veterinary care, and supplies for those in need in our pet community. Byron Lindley, a 70% free throw shooter on the year, and this is that time. I'm not sure he has hit a single shot since the injury back in the latter stages of the first quarter. He has not. He had nine points in the first five minutes of the game. Then got cut above the eye, and that's his first point since that, and it finally gets the double figures. 12-point Benton Arbor lead. A little more than five minutes to go here in the third. Jeremiah Palmer did check into the game, so the Palmer Twins back on the floor together here for the first time in a while. Here's Mason, who has played well tonight, and hits that baseline jumper. Javon with nine. That was a tough look, and he got it to go. Meanwhile, at the other end, Jeremiah Palmer doesn't get it to go. The rebound to King, and everything going Benton Harbor's way right now. Josiah with a little move down the lane. Nate Knapp needs a timeout, and he knows it. The Tiger fans come to their feet in the Bobcat Den. Their team has opened up a 16-point lead on 46. And this edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to us by Ben Soft Pretzels, serving our community one pretzel at a time. Time for our Ben Soft Pretzel trivia question tonight. Name the former Benton Harbor player who's in the Basketball Hall of Fame. Good question, because Benton Harbor has had their share of players make it to the NBA, but who's the one that's in the Basketball Hall of Fame? Ben Soft Pretzels has been supporting high school athletics since 2008, they believe that sports are an important part of a well-rounded education and are proud to support the next generation of athletes. Find Ben Soft Pretzels at the University Park Mall and at most major Notre Dame athletic events. Have a pretzel day. I think this is one of those you either know it or you don't. And if you don't know it, well, all the time in the world's not gonna help you. <laughs> Chet the Jet Walker, the former Chicago Bull, 1958 alum, 13 years in the NBA with almost 19,000 points. <laughs> My goodness. And that was before they had a three-point line. Byron Lindley down the lane. Josiah King says, that's mine. Callahan fell down. He was fouled by Jameer Palmer, and Callahan slow to get up. Hopefully Antoine is okay, and he appears that he is, which is a good sign. And he gets a nice ovation from the Benton Harbor crowd. Take a look at the replay brought to you by Brandywine Athletics here coming up. See him cutting inside. Kind of just got hit in the knee as he went down. So probably had that little sharp pain 
just from the contact from his opponent. Not He's, shooting foul. He is trying to convince the official that it was in the act of shooting. Corey Sterling is trying to add his two cents as well. Neither one will be heard, and then we've got a push-off foul underneath on Mustafa Mohammed, and that's his fourth. He is limping a little bit, so we'll see if they decide to keep him in or not. Meanwhile, we'll let you know that B. Crafty gives a shout-out to all the Brandywine student-athletes. Good luck and go Bobcats. Paint your own pottery and canvas painting studio is located in downtown Niles. Walk in any time to paint or glaze your art project. Visit BACraftyB.com or find us on Facebook. Jameer Palmer missed that three, but an offensive rebound by Dye, and Dye is rewarded for his efforts, but missed the layup. Callahan comes the other way. And Antoine's rainbow shot won't go. Josiah King with the rebound. That's too strong. Tipped around. Benton Harbor with another offensive board. This time it's Mason missing. Here comes Brandywine. Jeremiah Palmer missed the layup. Tipped around. It comes to King. He whips it to Callahan for two. The faster the tempo, the more Benton Harbor loves it. And the problem here is Brandywine almost has to play their best game, right? A per no, I don't want to say perfect, but they got to play their best. And Benton Harbor is preventing that from happening, but then Brandywine shooting themselves in the foot a little bit with some bunnies that they just are not getting in. Such as that one by Lindley. And Dye tried to save it, but went right to Josiah King, who has it knocked away from behind. Lake Michigan College in Benton Harbor and South Haven, Michigan, proud to support high school athletics. With over 80 fields of study, let Lake Michigan College help launch your future. Learn more at lakemichigancollege.edu or find them on Facebook. Nate Knapp watching in frustration. He was a little bit nervous of how his team would play tonight. And they were great for one quarter, but since then, Benton Harbor has absolutely dominated, and that young man, Josiah King, is having a great night with 17 points. Six here in the third quarter. The Tigers by 20, and finally, Nylon Jones gets his first field goal tonight. Remember, he averages 12 points a game. Corey Sterling talked about defense all week, talked about defense tonight when he got to the gym, and his team has clearly gotten the message. They have played terrific defense tonight. Brandywine hoping to reward themselves with good defense on that play. And they'll go to the free throw line brought to you by Michiana Rental. And we'll let you know that with locations in Warsaw and Elkhart, Babsco Supply is working together to serve you better as one of the largest independent 100% employee owned electrical distributors in Northern Indiana. They strive to be number one in customer service, supplying all of the electrical supplies you need whenever you need them. Jeremiah Palmer hits the first free throw as J.T. Smith takes the place of Brock Nye in the Bobcat lineup. Jeremiah Palmer with 11 points tonight, coming off an 18-point performance Tuesday night against the Moy Norks. Hits both. Bobcat's still down by 16. Nate Knapp probably hoping to get this to about a 10-point game if he can, going to the fourth. But Josiah King having a good night. Couldn't hit that one. Here's Palmer. Lost the handle going up. Meeks comes the other way for Benton Harbor. That's 13 turnovers now for Brandywine here this evening. Couple that with one of their worst shooting nights of the year. That does not bode well. And five of those 13 turnovers here in the first six minutes of the second quarter, or third quarter. Palmer tried to save it, but couldn't. For more than 20 years, Michiana Rentals serving the Niles community need party, graduation, or wedding rentals. Michiana Rental has you covered. Cheering for the Bobcats. Good luck. Antoine Callahan lost the handle. Here's Brandywine coming the other way. Jeremiah Palmer for two. 14 for Jeremiah. At the other end, uh, three on the way by Mason is off. And here's Brandywine chiseling away, trying to get back in this. Goins. <laughs> That's a 9-0 Brandywine run. 
still down by 11, but there's life in the Bobcat den. Callahan, top side, triple. Too strong, Meeks a one-hand rebound. That is a massive <laughs> rebound for Benton Harbor. That's a man's rebound. Oh. It's a steal by Brandywine. Goins, nine-point game. 11-0 Bobcat run, and listen to this place. King, foul line jumper, pure. And a whistle and a timeout called by Corey Sterling and Benton Harbor with 39.9 seconds left in the quarter. Now hiring Montanier is looking for talented individuals to join our tier. Montanier provides the machinery, tools, and training required to produce superior results. Your success at Montanier is our priority. Be successful and shape your career with us. Apply now at Montanier.com. You see Corey Sterling in the middle of that Benton Harbor huddle. He is Mr. Benton Harbor basketball these days. An All-State player back in the 90s, was on their 1993 runner-up team. 230 career wins. He's been to three Final Fours, and they won it all in 2018. But the Bobcat faithful trying to rally their team. They're down by 11 with 39.9 to go in the quarter, but they were down by 20 a little bit ago. I, was, I want to say something about Curlis, Corey Sterling, but I want to get a lot of love to Brandywine's people here tonight. That's about as loud as you can get coming out of a timeout in this gym. By the way, Corey Sterling, 230 wins in 12 seasons, Chuck. That's what I said to you when you said what his stat was. I go, are you sure that's not a typo? Yeah. That's how many wins he has. Incredible. That shows you the kind of tournament runs they've been able to make, too, to get well over the 20 win mark some seasons. J.T. Smith. Here they come. Nate Knapp wants defensive pressure. He doesn't want King to just stand there with the ball. You see the clock right-hand corner. Meeks trying to go to work for three. It's off. The Bobcats are back in it, folks. It was negative 20 for Brandywine, then Jalen Goins and J.T. Smith. Now we got an eight-point game headed to the fourth on 46. This edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you in part by API St. Andrews, 31 years of success. It is loud up here in the Bobcat Den. What about courtside, Bo Hunt? Yeah, we knew it was going to be a packed house here tonight. It is loud. It's crazy, especially with the comeback with Brandywine. Everybody getting into it right now. What a great job. They only really gained one point since the halftime on the differential of the score. But momentum, I think, is the biggest thing they gain here in, late in that third quarter. So we'll see if that momentum can carry in for Brandywine into the fourth. For Benton Harbor, they just need to get at it, get more physical like they were the first two quarters of the game. And right? you really got to feel these first couple minutes of this fourth quarter are absolutely critical for both these teams. Yeah, no question. I mean, right now, Brandywine's feeling it. They're on a run. Their fans are into it. Ben Harbor, maybe for the first time in a long time, feeling the pressure a little bit of that undefeated season on the line. They were up by 20, now it's down to eight. This is a big possession here right out of the gate in the fourth. And the fourth quarter is brought to you by Lake Michigan College. Driving Palmer, bucket of the bump. Watch it again on the Bobcat replay. Drives inside. A little contact. The finish. And how fired up is he to complete the three-point play brought to you by Michiana Rental. And he does. Rolls it in. 17 for Jeremiah. Down to a five-point game. 
That's where we were after one quarter. <laughs> Here's Jaquan Lewis bringing it across for Benton Harbor. Mustafa Muhammad as they try to spread the floor. Lewis down low to Callahan. They wanted to double on him. He traveled. <laughs> Took the bunny hop. And now it's Goins bringing it across for Brandywine. Lately for three. Too strong. It's an air ball. King will race it up the floor for Benton Harbor. Callahan took kind of a wild shot, but King is there, and he'll go to the line for free throw, sponsored by Michiana Rental after yet another offensive rebound. Iron Shoe wishes the Brandywine student athletes good luck and go Bobcats. Iron Shoe voted the number one restaurant in Niles, serving the highest quality burgers and fries. Family friendly atmosphere. Check out Iron Shoe. Josiah King had a double double on Tuesday night in that game against Lakeshore when Benton Harbor had to come from behind to win. He has 20 points here tonight. Remember, he had 31 the first time these two teams played. And Benton Harbor's purest free throw shooter strikes again, draining that one. And the Tigers go to the bench with Rodney Ford, replacing Jaquan Lewis. Together, we are building a strong and united Brandywine community that celebrates success both on and off the field, supporting their academic and athletic goals and the values of sportsmanship, perseverance, and respect. Jameer Palmer. Goins. Little teardrop. He's got 10 all in the second half. And we're back to a five point game with six and a half to go in regulation. Muhammad taken away. Goins, free throw game. They want to double him. Here's Mason, lost it out of bounds. And Brandywine could tie it on this possession. Once down 20. We can't overestimate how loud it is in here. We can't overstate it, I should say. It is so loud, and now we've got an injured player down for Benton Harbor. I believe this is Javon Mason, so while they tend to him, let's take a timeout. 5.58 to go in regulation. Benton Harbor leads Brandywine 51-48 on 46. This edition of the 46 game of the week being brought to you by Tire Rack. Tire Rack had nine points, but he is helped to the bench by his teammates, unable to put pressure on one of his legs. And so once again, as you'll see it here, the help to the bench, and actually they pretty much just carried him over. Now he's walking to the sideline, trying to maybe, he's gonna go out to the gym and see if he can walk it off and see how he's doing, so we'll monitor that situation. Meanwhile, Brandywine could tie it with a three here, but they have rallied from down 20 to come within three. Jeremiah Palmer working on Callahan. And Callahan rubbed that one away and stares down Palmer on the baseline. Nate Knapp will take a timeout now. It's sponsored by Modernier, and we'll keep it here with 5.36 to go in regulation. This game's health tip is brought to you by HealthLink. Healthy kids are better students and better athletes. Schedule an annual wellness checkup at HealthLink today. HealthLink offers medical, dental, vision, and more. The story of Nate Knapp as the Brandywine head coach is one of the most amazing stories you'll ever hear. This is his record through the first nine years and then the last 10. 
His athletic director had to go before the school board when he was 2 and 17 and say, I think he's doing a good enough job. He should stay. He had another losing season the year after that, but then things started to turn around, building to last year's trip to the Breslin Center and a Final Four trip. But to have the wherewithal and the patience as an athletic department, and credit Vance Stratton, the old athletic director here at Brandywine, who stood by him through nine seasons, averaging six wins a season, seeing what he could do now. Unbelievable. And that got a lot of credit to the principal and also to the, the school board as well, right? Because the Brandywine girls program have been excellent even during that, and yet the boys seem struggling, you stick with it, and you get the benefit now. Ball knocked out of bounds, and it's going to go to Benton Harbor. They say Lindley had his foot on the line when he picked up the ball. Nate Knapp trying to convince the officials that that was deflected, and now the third official coming over to say, mm. I think Dan Starr might have seen it differently. But it'll be Tiger basketball with a three-point lead. Antoine Callahan, seven points so far tonight. Brings it across. Got some screens. Down the lane with the right hand for two. That was pretty. That's the first field goal of the fourth quarter for Benton Harbor. Callahan trying to D up Jeremiah Palmer. It's Lindley over in the corner. Goins got a step on Meeks, couldn't hit. Rebound collected by King. Great outlet pass down the court to Callahan for two. Wave it off, that's a charge. Look at the replay here brought to you by Brandywine Athletics. Byron Lindley had the shot in the first quarter, hasn't had the shot since. There he does the little dirty work to get his team the ball back. Excellent job by the senior leader of this Brandywine team. And Lindley running around screens trying to get open, but Callahan was right there with him. J.T. Smith underneath to Lindley. Brandywine trying to get its spacing right here. Goins found a seam. The sophomore with 14. He made one free throw in the first half. The next 13 points here in the second half for the sophomore. King with stop and go moves for two. A big man that can handle the ball like that. Just doing a tremendous job here tonight. Here's Goins for three. That's an air ball. And it is saved inbounds, but to Benton Harbor. Callahan with numbers. Leaves it underneath and it's thrown away. Now serving Benton Harbor for graduations, weddings, and equipment rentals. Michiana Rental gives a shout out to all the Benton Harbor student athletes. Good luck and go Tigers. Will Hubbard, a 6'4 freshman, checks back in for Brandywine. As Nate Knapp just trying to keep some fresh wheels out there. Is there a point where Brandywine can take the lead? They are down five. Jameer Palmer. Lindley for three. Flies in to get the rebound to Goins. And somehow he didn't drive it. Another excellent job by Lindley doing the other stuff outside of the shot to help his team out. Lindley to Hubbard. Big fella. Bouncing around with Muhammad. Couldn't get it to go, but it's knocked out of bounds by Muhammad, and it'll be Brandywine ball. The difference for Brandywine right now, Chuck, they're giving themselves second and third chances. That didn't happen in the first half. Now, though, they have to be able to convert them. Brandywine High School Athletics encourages 
for tip for participation in sports and extracurricular activities. Like speech team, and debate. <laughs> teamwork, leadership, and healthy lifestyle choices. Easy for the broadcaster to say. Three minutes to go. Goins for three. Yes, sir. Two-point game in the bend. Folks, we told you it was going to be good. Here's King. Wooden go, gets his own rebound. Bucket of the bump. What a player. What a player, Josiah King. Bo, I know as we look at this Brandywine Athletics replay, you came up here at halftime and you were just raving about Josiah King. I don't think he's changed your mind here in the second half, has he? No, he's just reinforced it. I mean, I, I came up and I was like, uh, Zion Williams. I mean, I, I just, <laughs> the way he plays, his mannerisms, his physique, the ability for him to stop on a dime for some jumpers. I mean, if he can grow into his body in college, uh, I, I don't see why not, guys. Meanwhile, at the other end, Jeremiah Palmer was fouled on the way up and he'll go to the line for free throw sponsored by Michigan Riddle. And I think that's five on Mustafa Muhammad, and he's done for the night. Now hiring, Montnier is looking for talented individuals to join our team. Montnier provides machinery tools and training required to produce superior results. Your success at Montnier is our priority. Be, sh be successful, shape your career with us. Apply now, Montnier.com. The second straight 18 point game for Jeremiah Palmer and he would like to add to it here. Three sport athlete had a career high 30 against Gary and Springs. Couldn't get that one to go though. A rare miss at the foul line. It's a three point game and King is in a hurry. His pass intercepted by Palmer. Goins, J.T. Smith, Tigan. <laughs> Callahan handles it for Benton Harbor. Underneath Rodney Ford with the right hand rims out. Bobcats in a hurry. It's Goins and it's erased by Meeks. No foul. They'll say it's a clean block. It'll be an inbound play coming up as you take a look at the replay here brought to you by Brandywine Athletics. And <laughs> he got a lot of ball. I don't know if he got a little extra or something else though. JT Smith. Can he get the reverse layup? Yes! The senior with eight, and the Bobcats have their first lead since the first quarter. Intercepted by Lindley. Goins! Wouldn't go. Tip back outside, and Brandywine will work some clock with a minute to go in regulation. They were down by 20, and now they're up by two. Benton Harbor has only committed three fouls, so Corey Sterling says, we got to get out on people. They can't sit back. The perfect season is on the line for the Tigers, and a timeout called by Brandywine. It's sponsored by Modineer with 42.5 seconds left. Imagineering Finishing Technologies in South Bend is globally known as the knowledge source for metal finishing solutions. Like the teams in this game, Imagineering is always working towards a great finish. Thank you, Imagineering, for your continued support of high school sports on TV 46. For those of you watching this game in Indiana and thinking, wow, that's a tournament-like atmosphere. Guess what? Your tournament starts, well, it kind of starts Sunday when the sectional draw comes out. And those pairings will be announced at IHSATV.org beginning at 5 o'clock. Bob Lovell and Greg Rakestraw will take you through all four classes in the state of Indiana. And you can only hope 
Hoosier hysteria as good as the Bobcat Den on one particular night. Michigan Madness is in the house. Look at this crowd. We expected a great atmosphere. It's more than lived up to the expectations. About as good of an atmosphere as you will ever be a part of. Randy Wine by two, 42 and a half seconds left. Bobcats pull the trigger on the inbound, and JT Smith is fouled by Meeks. That's his third. But remember, Benton Harbor had a foul to give, so didn't let any time get off the clock. Now they just want to be a little bit careful as to who they foul here. Brandy, Nine, Brandy Wine, not an excellent free throw shooting team. They have a few good free throw shooters, however. Lindley typically is one of them. Smith, two. He has 10 off the bench. King at the other end, too strong. Got his own rebound, stripped away. Ahead to Goins. Can you believe it? Callahan for three, it rims out. And there's going to be a party in Niles Township like you can't believe tonight. Brandy Wine has handed Benton Harbor its first loss of the season, 63-57. They rally from 20 down, and it's a court storming at the Bobcat Den. Wow, and good work here by both teams, still going through the handshake line, good sportsmanship, a lot of respect between these two teams, a lot of these kids played AAU basketball together. Tremendous respect between these two programs, and a tremendous basketball game here tonight as Brandywine beats Benton Harbor 63-57. We're back to talk about it on our post-game show after this on 46. Standing by with our player of the game, Jeremiah. What was it like coming down the stretch there? You guys were down almost by 22 points. Just coming back and the feeling that you guys had coming back from that. Oh, uh, it was electric, man. I knew we had it in us, though. We we playing soft, playing it like intimidated, but we, we know we're, we know how good we are, so we know we had to come back and finish the game. We can't go out like that. Goins, huge points there in the fourth quarter. JT as well, just your teammates really stepped up. What can you say about those guys? Uh, before the game, we always talked about not being scared because every time we ever played them, we played intimidated and we couldn't let them, like, we just couldn't play bad. So I know my teammates had to believe in them, give them their shots because I know they practice those shots. Conference champs, yeah. how, does, how does that feel, buddy? It uh, feels good. That was our goal in the beginning of the season. I was one of them, but we got more to go. You knocked Benton Harbor off, give them their first loss. Buzzer beater last year. How does it feel to knock them out of that column as well? It feels good this year because last year I know we could have beat them too, but the game winner, there's nothing we can do about it. Hey, Jeremiah, thanks a lot for being our player of the game. Thank you. Guys, I got uh, Coach uh, Nate over here as well. Coach. Nate, yeah. you guys were down double digits big time. Yeah second half what was it that got your team together well this team right here man I mean they, they're fighters they're resilient we went down by 20 and I don't like to say things to get them mad but I said it's men against boys right now and they just they responded real well to that and I know that they worked really hard man and they just didn't want to roll over they're one of the best teams around man they worked their butts off and it just we keep getting better every every day I got Jameer Palmer who's hurt right now both ankles but he's busting his butt every day and 
This whole team, the character, they, you can pin them down, but they're not going to go easily, and they kept fighting, clawing their way back. Hey, go enjoy this with the community and everything. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here, man. Back to you guys. Thanks for watching the WHME TV 46 High School Basketball Game of the Week. Brought to you by... I don't think they're going home anytime soon. Because <laughs> Brandywine High School tonight is tied for the Lakeland Conference lead and championship after rallying from 20 points down to beat Benton Harbor by a final score 63-57. Chuck Freebie, Angelo DiCarlo, truly high above the fray tonight, my friend. I believe that will be a 46 sports classic. More uh, than likely. Yeah, I would think so. About as good of a game, a good as an atmosphere before the game even started, right? Yeah. You know, this was built up, top five matchup, going to be sellout, was a sellout an hour before the game. It more than lived up to the hype. And to come back from 20 down against a 20 and 0 team, yeah. What a job by Brandywine here tonight. Plenty of heroes for the Bobcats. You could have picked Nyland Gones, who had that incredible second half. J.T. Smith, some money shots down the stretch. But Mr. Steady, one of the twins, Jeremiah Palmer, is our player of the game. He had 20 points. He's standing by now with Bo Hunt. To stand by with our player of the game, Jeremiah. What was it like coming down the stretch there? You guys were down 
almost by 22 points. Just coming back and the feeling that you guys had coming back from that. Oh, it was electric, man. I knew we had it in us, though. We we playing soft, playing like intimidated, but we, we know we're, we know how good we are, so we know we had to come back and finish the game. We can't go out like that. Goins, huge points there in the fourth quarter. JT as well, just your teammates really stepped up. What can you say about those guys? Uh, before the game, we always talked about not being scared because every time we had played them, we played intimidated, and we couldn't let them, like, we just couldn't play bad. So I know my teammates had to believe in them, give them their shots because I know they practice those shots. Conference champs, yeah. how, does, how does that feel, buddy? It uh, feels good. That was our goal in the beginning of the season. I was one of them, but we got more to go. You knocked Benton Harbor off, give them their first loss. Buzzer beater last year. How does it feel to knock them out of that column as well? It feels good this year because last year I know we could have beat them too, but the game winner, there's nothing we can do about it. Hey, Jeremiah, thanks a lot for being our player of the game. Thank you. Guys, I got uh, Coach uh, Nate over here as well. Coach. Nate, yeah. you guys were down double digits big time. Yeah. Second half, what was it that got your team together? Well, th this team right here, man, I mean, they, they, they're fighters. They're resilient. We went down by 20, and I don't like to say things to get them mad, but I said it's men against boys right now. And they just, they, they responded real well to that. And I know that they, they worked really hard, man, and, and they just didn't want to roll over. They're one of the best teams around, man. They worked their butts off, and it just, we keep getting better every, every day. I got Jameer Palmer, who's hurt right now, both ankles, but he's busting his butt every day. And this whole team, the character, they, you can pin them down, but they're not going to go easily. And they kept fighting, clawing their way back. Hey, go enjoy this with the community and everything. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here, man. Back to you guys. So our first time at the Bobcat 10, well worth it. Now, the question is, there's another side of this equation. That's Corey Sterling's Benton Harbor Tigers. Do they learn some lessons from this that they can apply so that when the tournament begins, they can be the force that they're expected to be in Division II. And they got another big game before that against Niles, who's a very good squad themselves. And then they got to make a run here in the postseason where they got knocked out earlier than expected a year ago. So you're right. But he says every loss is a lesson. They've learned that throughout their lives and throughout their careers. It's what Corey Sterling pe preaches to his team, and that's what they're going to like to learn from here heading into the tournament. And oh, by the way, Brandywine, the friends at Waterville Elite that you have, that team that you knocked out of the tournament last year that was a favorite, they're looking for you in district. <laughs> the player family is looking for you, and they're going to be ready. So it should be an exciting tournament up here in the state of Michigan. I don't know if it can be any more exciting, though, than what we just witnessed. So let's look at our electrifying play of the game, sponsored by the Electrical Workers of Local 153. J.T. Smith had a big fourth quarter. Oh, uh, he was unbelievable. And here, underneath, gets the reverse look for the give them the lead for the first time since the first quarter. What an amazing job by J.T. Smith. Also had a huge three-pointer, as you said. It was a team effort to come back in that second half when you're down by 20 points, and Brandywine got it from everybody in the second half. And this is just the start of your high school basketball weekend. If the girls' semi-state lives up to this, we're going to have a lot of fun in Huntington on Saturday. Our thanks to our TV46 crew who helped bring you this one, led by our production manager, Dean Corsmo, and our talented cast of men who help bring you high school basketball each and every week. A reminder, the IHSA girls' semi-state is Saturday on TV 46 in Class 3A. The Northwood Black Swish take on the Bremen Lions. We'll have it for you Saturday afternoon at 5 p.m. on TV 46. And then Big Ten basketball on the radio Sunday. Purdue and Ohio State tip it off at 1 o'clock in Columbus on 103.1 FM. That's followed by Northwestern and Indiana from Assembly Hall. Now from our broadcast partner, the Hall of Famer Bo Hunt and Angelo DiCarlo, Chuck Freeby, once again the final, Brandywine 63, Benton Harbor 57. So long from Nutty Niles Township. <laughs>